Tonight on Country Squire Radio, ladies and gentlemen, he's back all the way from Chicago. This is John David Cole talking the Chicago Pipe Show, baby. Country came to town and then went back home. Yeah, I couldn't handle it. <laughs> Plus, are you baked? What is now that? What I'm saying is, have you baked your tobacco in the oven? <laughs> There's a pipe question about that. We got quick fire questions, listener feedback, and more happening right now on Country Squire Radio. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Boat, and I'm John David. JD, hey, B Y. <laughs> wow, that really threw me off. I mean, <laughs> Brian, Brian specifically asked that I call you BY. It yeah. was a, you know, it, it, and I mean, it, it is, you are BY. No, no, no. We did that when uh, when he came on the show and everything. We had, we had yeah. a little fun fun with that. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. good. It was no, good. How you doing, Buck? I'm doing all right. I'm doing good. <laughs> it caught you off guard. No, it did. It did. We got a, we got a flow and a cadence of just like the last right. four years, and all of a sudden, BY. Wow. There it is. I know, right? <laughs> Man, it's, so, it's good to see you. Hey, I know, man. Golly, it's been such an exciting several days here. Just came back from uh, from the big city, and uh, man, just had a had a great time. Got to connect with so many of our uh, you know dear friends, listeners, and uh, you know just folks in the industry. And man, uh, I had a had an excellent time. It was just a real a real blast. Good man. I know we got a lot of stories to share tonight. Yeah. Well, tonight's episode. Yeah. Uh, what we got going on though in the, the the local community? Anything on the horizon? Well, uh, of course our um, uh, our shop is moving. We've made that very clear, yeah. and uh, that is that is going to happen. We think uh, next month. We don't have an exact date, but they just started uh, demolition this week, actually, on the new space. And so there is a uh, dumpster next door oh, wow. uh, being filled with things that are not going to be included in our new shop that's in that space now. And so they're uh, we're trying to work through that. And uh, yeah, I mean uh, that that's about it, really. We're, you know, it's it's interesting as a retailer. Um, it's kind of hard because we don't have a lot of hard dates. And so it's hard to plan events, uh, with, uh, with this upcoming move. So we're kind of just trying to be, um, you know, mindful of that and, you know, as aggressive as we can without, uh, overextending. Cause we just don't, we just don't know what the next couple of months is going to look like, you know? <laughs> which is kind of frustrating because really, you know, for the pipe industry, uh, you know, father's day will be in June and man, yeah. that's, a, that's always a big, uh, you know, kind of a big, a push, you know, for, for folks in the, in the, in the pipe industry. And so, um, yeah, as we're just trying to figure it out, but, uh, man, yeah, other, other than that, things are kind of quiet around the old pipe shop. Interesting. So, I mean, yeah. maybe, I mean, maybe, uh, you know, as a, as a customer community, we could, uh, we could buy pipes for moms this year. We could, we no, that's, make, that's true. It, it, it should be. That, that's, it, that's true. It should be. Is, is that a thing? Like, have, have there been some Mother's Day pipes purchased? In your time, I since I've been here, I don't think I've sold a pipe for Mother's Day. Interesting. Yeah, I, I've sold some pipes for ladies for Christmas and for their birthdays, but I I don't I don't think I've sold a Mother's Day pipe yet. If anybody's yeah. got like a Mother's Day pipe story, I would love to hear that. Yeah, y'all send that into us. Yeah, that'd, that'd be interesting. No, that'd be good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great. Well, man, we got uh, we got some some movers and some shakers going on here at the uh, in the International uh, Country Square Radio International Pipe Club. Man, we've got joining the club. At the squire level, ladies and gentlemen, Roger Lerd. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's did, you, did you call him Roger? Uh, Roger, Roger Lord, <laughs> Roger Lord, man, Roger Lord, Roger. Th thank you so much. Thank you so much, brother, for joining at the squire level, man. We are so so glad to have you on board. And that's that's not it, is it? No, that's right. We also have joining at the pilgrim level, uh, Andrew Lyne. Andrew Lynn. Yes. Andrew Lynn. Th yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> man, we're so glad to have both these fellows. Uh, gosh, we, um, man, have just had such a robust, growing uh, group of folks there on our uh, Country Squire Radio International Pipe yeah. Club and uh, over on Patreon. We're so thankful. And, uh, man, Roger and Andrew, thanks, brother. Thanks, brothers. Yeah. Dude, we, we also, <laughs> of course, you know, we're, we're in May now. Uh, the, the weather has changed and is, is it's uh, hot it's, down here. It's hot. It's yeah. bombarding us with the pollen. Uh, but a new month means that new squires actually are being added to right. uh, their names on the wall. The wall of honor. Yep. Yeah. So uh, joining uh, joining that wall of honor uh, at the one at the one year level here, uh, squire members uh, Corey Hayes and Alex Cairns. Your 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 plaques have been ordered. Isn't that exciting? I know, right? That is great. We've got a, a growing number. You know, it's it's really neat. I need to actually take some photos up there. But the uh, since the beginning of this year, when all our uh, radio uh, friends have. Uh, got on board dude uh, just it's prolific this beam that kind of uh, runs the length of our shop here it's 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 literally the structure our building is built on and it's the <laughs> and it's the foundation of our of our shop as well it's it's you guys and uh me and y'all are y'all are up there and uh and and we can't wait you know that's gonna be a part of our new our new right. Building, yeah, right yeah yeah so uh, we're trying to figure out a way to integrate that that's just as symbolic and so we've got to got to figure that out but don't worry your name is is coming along so, so at one point at yeah. one point we had kind of talked about like 
having like a display case for like the microphones or something like that in, in the new spot. I, I can't even imagine where that might go, but I was just, I, you know, I don't know. I was just, just thinking to toy around with that. Yeah. yeah. Like the names and the know. microphones. Cause that's the thing. When people come in, they see their name. No, it's all, true. You know? Yeah, no, absolutely. You can, you know, have you ever been to the Vatican? I have not. Okay. So at the Vatican, <laughs> They got, I think, and and uh, Catholic listeners, y'all, y'all forgive me, um, but but I think it's Saint Peter, who is sitting up there, and he's got his feet, and people can come by and touch his feet, and touch his feet, and yeah. so like, and it's it's amazing because over the years, so many people have actually touched they his. They kind of worn down. They've worn down. He's got right. like flat toes. That's funny. and it's like made of like <laughs> brass. You know what I'm saying? Like just over time, just so many people have That's come awesome. and touched his feet. So that could be the microphones. People would come and touch the microphones, and then they just wear down. And then what, every week we just talk into these nubs. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because so many people came in town for it. It'd be great. It'd be wonderful. But anyway, uh, shouts out to those of y'all who are uh, supporting us over at Patreon. You know, especially after last week's episode, uh, it, it goes a long way to helping uh, secure this content and ensuring that you continue to get it on a weekly basis uh, and and on and and on infinity. Um, Add infinitum. That that one. That one. That one. Yeah. That that's that's. <laughs> <laughs> well, man. So, of course, you you were in Chicago, and and this being kind of a uh, a Chicago focused episode, I think it's kind of uh, apropos. We give a, a, a an appropriate shout out to uh, Mr. Brandon uh, Marquinos Marchinos Mar- Marchinos. He found you. Yeah. Hashtag find JD. He did. He sure did. And uh, and <laughs> the funny thing is, when I mentioned the the hashtag find JD, I didn't realize, but apparently that's that's a hashtag that's already being used by like a a RuneScape game streamer. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, I went on. I was like, "Okay, let's see who found JD." And I see all of these like pictures from this video game. I'm like, "This isn't it." It's like, <laughs> like, I should have vetted that hashtag. There's gonna be a out. lot of a lot of uh, really uh, concerned and confused people because of that. Yeah, exactly, dude. No, we had such a great time. It was uh, it was just awesome to to get to see uh, you know our dear friends that. Uh, made the trek up there had you know had a lot and of course uh, got to uh you know meet several new folks saw some old friends and um you know folks that had been there before but had kind of picked up listening to us since last time and so uh you know just uh, got to connect with them but it was it was great because um I just felt like the community was really tight this year like everyone was just really uh, excited kind of a kind of some uh, some nervousness but also a lot of excitement so uh you know we'll talk about that in a second but um, yeah, it was great. You know, I, our, our good friend, John Michael, he came with us, uh, came with me, uh, up there and, um, and, you know, he's a pipe carver. He, he, he has been doing this for a long time, but because of his work overseas, just is very intermittent. Uh, yeah, but it was cool yeah. getting to watch him. You know, he's just a big redneck 12 year old is basically what in a 34 year old's body. Yeah, know? of course. Yeah. And, and, and so, uh, getting to watch it was so great because he, uh, got to interact with some of these carvers that you know it was he's been talking to online for over a decade and yet has never met them in person and so and some of these people are his biggest supporters with his uh you know endeavors in, in papua new guinea and and all that and so um so he finally got to meet some of these people and break bread with them and you know smoke a pipe and it was cool he was just really freaking out meeting some of his favorite carvers and um and then also uh you know and i saw this a lot it was really special but uh the interaction between carvers right you know like yo let me see what you're doing hey do you have any criticism for me here like how can you help me and just the real the real trust and respect that uh was going on. he was like yeah you know yeah i like how you're doing this you could work on this this is what i do that might help you and uh man folks in the industry are just so open about that kind of stuff and it was uh it was encouraging to see to see that well, well lay the groundwork because if someone's tuning into the show and they they've never been to the chicago pipe show or maybe they're not even familiar with it i mean like like how would you how would you describe what exactly this is yeah of course you know if you've listened before and um you know have heard us talk about it before you've been there you know you'll be aware but um you know the chicago pipe show it's the it's the largest pipe show in the world it's uh it's a consumer show but also you have retailers and uh, folks in the industry that are there. Um, and, and it's, it's fun because, you know, there's some folks in my position that actually go and have a booth and set up and try to sell things and things like that. And then there's guys like me that just go up there and meet friends and smoke pipes and has a, you know, blistered tongue for a week and a half afterwards. (laughs) And, uh, and, and, you know, uh, you know, just had a, had a great time, um, doing that. But yeah, um, imagine, you know, just a huge convention hall at a, uh, at a hotel, um, that looks like it came out of the shining. We we've established that before. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, it just, just very, uh, very questionable decor, 
uh, in- incredibly dated, uh, but very, but very pipe friendly. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> that, that's that's all I know how to say it. You know, that, that's that's all I know to no, say. That's, yeah. that's a, that's a I, and, 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 and yeah, no, I think I hit the nail on the head. And uh, yeah, so imagine a huge convention floor, and it is just uh, man packed with you know the entire uh, players in the industry and and folks from all over the world. You had uh, you know carvers and folks from uh, uh, China, from all over Europe, uh, lots of Russian and um, you know, Eastern Europe folks, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very common when you're walking around the floor to hear people speaking, uh, you know, Danish and, um, you know, it's just, it's just really neat, you know, accents from all over the country, of course, and, uh, best friends from different parts of the world, uh, that have just connected over this, this passion that we have, which is, which is pipe smoking. And so, um, yeah, it's really, really cool. And then of course, so that's inside. And then adjacent to this, uh, in this gigantic, uh, big top tent, uh, it, which has you know been constructed outside. Yeah, I think like and, circus tent. Yeah, it's like it's like a it's like a big circus tent, right? And you've got uh, it, you know it it's been surrounded with uh, plastic walls, and it's got uh, air conditioning and um, you know ventilation and all this stuff. And it's the smoking tent, and they've got a bartender out there. And man, it is just it's just crazy. I mean, it, it just the the amount of smoke is so. <laughs> prolific <laughs> that you really when you leave the smoking tent you really don't need to bring your bring your um your clothing home you really just need to burn it and leave it up there like just, just <laughs> right kind of, right let, leave it in the dumpster you know or leave, let the maid deal with it when she's cleaning the room it's true um, the chicago pipe show definitely comes back home with you yeah it, it does man my, <laughs> my suitcase is like really did you do this again um so uh but yeah i mean so it's it's just great it's great fun they've got seminars you've got uh, kind of these break off rooms where people are doing either seminars. Uh, some of the vendors have such a big display of things like uh, Steve Norris with Vermont Freehand. He's he's selling, uh, you know, wares to all the um, all the pipe carvers in America. You know, he's the best source for uh, things like ebonite to make stems and Delrin tenons and bamboo for uh, accent, you know, accents and, and, and for shanks and um, you know, obviously blocks of briar and uh, filing tools and buffing wheels and just just a whole you know boatload of things that you could uh, need you know for um, for making pipes and so you know he's got a whole suite uh, that's kind of blocked out just for just for that um, and then and then also you've got folks that uh, you know they may have a very significant pipe collection that they're selling or maybe they represent some uh, some buyers or or, or a certain brand. Uh, of pipe and so they actually have rented rooms up in the hotel and they've you know you walk in there it's, it's kind of weird you walk in someone's like you know hotel room <laughs> right yeah. and spread out on their bed is you know like oh there's you know we're in someone's hotel room and there's a whole bed that's covered with you know thousand dollar pipes because like, right. this is normal right uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh man it's just it's so much fun and so people are bouncing back and forth between all these things lots of energy um and uh and and it really is just a just an excellent time if if you are a pipe smoker and an enthusiast um you ought to go you ought to go at least once yeah Yeah, i mean like you know to kind of put it 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 kind of reminds me of like a comp uh comic book convention except instead of comics everywhere it's it's pipes it's just it's it's just pipes man i mean you'll have you know it's so funny people covet these brands like you know if you're a long time listener to the show you know i'm a I'm a Sheraton guy. I love these Sheratons. This this shop was always a Sheraton shop when they were around. And, you know, so anytime I see one walk in the door, I get really excited. Well, you'll go to this show and and there will be a, you know, eight foot long table that's nothing but Lane era Sheratons and Dunhills from the 60s. You know, I mean, it's just, <laughs> right, it's, just right, it, right. it's mind boggling. You know, you think about the significant collections and uh, things that these people have amassed, uh, dealers that specialize in finding these gems, cleaning them up and reselling them. Uh, just, you know, basket pipes galore, uh, you know, it's the, as we mentioned, things to make uh, to make the pipes with, uh, like from folks like Steve, uh, you've got, um, you know, hobbyists that are not that are not making pipes, but making things that are associated with pipe smoking, sure. like leather goods or uh, specialty tampers or uh, even knives to cut plug tobacco with stuff like that. Just really cool, you know, knickknacks. And then so, of course, you're purchasing all this stuff. You got all this tobacco. And then, and then you're like, well, we got to go try it on for size. And then, so you, you stroll down to the smoking tent and you get you a cold beer and, uh, and, or, or maybe you sneak in some, uh, some, some fireball or something, uh, like, like yours truly did this time. Did you really? And, uh, it was really, oh it was really gosh. lame. Yeah. It was, it was really <laughs> lame. And, 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 and then, so you do that and you try your new pipe on for size and, uh, and you know, it's just great. It's great. How, how much damage did you do? So, so we're going to be revealing over the next several days, what we, what we bought. <laughs> 
Wait, was it for you or for the shop? I I purchased so much for the shop. Uh huh. I I wind Qu- up quote for the shop for the shop. Uh-huh. But see that that's that's what's so great <laughs> about being a retailer in this industry because I get to I get to it's like cathartic. You know, I get to go dump all this cash like on these uh, on these fine pipes. You know, just from amazing. Uh, vendors and then in my mind i'm terrified because i'm like okay now i've got to sell this stuff so that you know they don't come get me for not paying taxes or right, whatever. Right, right, right um you know or you know just you know i can't pay the uh, water bill anymore so they <laughs> cut me off um you know so i'm, I'm like terrified and i'm like well you know we'll, we'll make it work yeah we'll, we'll make it work but i mean you can't you, you can't have what you don't you, you, you can't sell what you don't have right, right you, you gotta, gotta, gotta yeah have. so i mean every you know every time you see something shiny where you're like <laughs> well you know the shop's gotta have that or gotta have that uh uh-huh. we need four of those those are cheap so why well, you make it eight you know and and it's just <laughs> on and on that kind of thing so um so anyway i've, I've got a couple pieces i'm um you know trying to figure out uh w- which one i'm gonna take the other one will be uh be here on our, on our inventory here in the shop oh, but man. Uh, got a bunch of bunch of cool stuff man we're really excited about releasing some of those things over the next few days but uh some new brands here at the country squire uh, premium brands were really, really fired up about and, um, and more to come very soon. So of course, yeah. I mean, that's the thing you walk in on this product all over the place. It really is. You, you almost feel like you're, you're, you're a kid in a candy store from that standpoint. Yeah, really. Uh, and any standout, um, uh, carvers are, are, you know, uh, in, in terms of something that maybe you hadn't seen before. Well, it's, it's really funny. So, you know, for several years now, um, Scotty Purcell, she's a, uh, carver from the Kansas city area. And, um, I think that's right. I think she's in Kansas city. Um, but anyway, she, uh, really talented. She makes, uh, you know, these pipes, she has a very specific style. Her style is, uh, almost being like, you know, you've got that small bowl, uh, long, uh, in many cases, pencil shank, thin stems, uh, lots of bright color, uh, or, you know, shanks that for that matter, uh, stems that are, you know, oftentimes lots of bright colors. Uh, you know, she just has this style. If you see a pipe, uh, the way her, her, the stem work on her pipes kind of fan out, it's just all very, uh, you know, very recognizable. So, uh, Scotty, of course, uh, was just up there just, you know, just slinging those pipes, man, mm. just people from all over, of course, uh, eating them up and, and, and she sold a lot, but what was, what was cool this year, this go around, her husband, uh, wanted to get into the pipe making, uh, kind of scene. Right. And so he, he was like, well, she's having all this fun. I want to have fun. Uh-huh. You know? yeah. and, and, and so he, uh, he started his own pipe brand and it's called crappy pipes. Well, hey, there you go. Yeah. Calling and, a duck a duck on that one. And, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's just one of those things. Like he was like, and he, you know, it was great. He made t-shirts and like was given out. He was like, yeah, you buy one for 50, buy two for 90, buy three for what? One, one thirty or something. And he was like, yeah. And if you buy three, you get a free fidget spinner, you know, it was just, oh, wow. it, it was awesome. And, and yeah. so yeah, he's just slinging these pipes, man. And what was great. I, I bought one, had to, had to support the effort. And, um, <laughs> Man, they were the effort was, of crappy pipes. I, I told him I smoked it. I smoked it three times on on Saturday, and I was like, "Man, I, I walked up to him and said, that's the best crappiest pipe I've ever smoked in my life.' <laughs> it was it was awesome, man. So he's he think he you know he's caught lightning in a bottle here. I think he's uh, got to figure th- it out. Think, think about expanding. Yeah, that's, so that's uh, good. So uh, you know it, it's uh it, it's pretty cool uh pretty cool model there. But uh, man, so many good good folks that we got to bump into and um, that's the thing it's not just about the product it's really about the people because i mean this is i mean it's like thanksgiving yeah for for kind of the pipe community so not only do you see the uh the folks in the industry but also just people who show up but yeah who who all did you see that's right man tons of folks got to um of course hang out with uh you know some old friends people like uh you know our carver friend jim deshane from california uh our you know good brother uh brian levine uh, who everyone knows. Now, who's that? Um, uh, he's got this other podcast that some people listen to. What's a podcast? Um, it, it's it's a it's a thing you you crank up and then and listen to through a horn. Okay. And and uh, and you know old school organ grinder music gotcha. plays in the background. Gotcha. Levin. Yeah. Uh, Bra- Brain Levin. Brain Levin. Brain Levin. Bra- Brain got Levin. Got that's it. that's right. Got it. Um, and, and and you know saw a bunch of folks. Man, our, our my old friend uh, Quincy Worthington from um from Indiana. Um you know, just lots of good folks. I have to spend some time with Ryan Phillips. Wish I could have spent more time with Ryan, man. He's just such a, such a nice guy. I felt like every time we kind of passed each other, we were running in one direction or another, but um, it was cool to, cool to connect with him. And um, man, just, just a lot of really great folks. Our good friend, Eric Karloski from, uh, from Michigan, uh, who does, and used used to work actually for, um, for, um, uh, let's see, what's the name of that? Indian River. Yeah. 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 Uh, Uh, Indian River Traders. 
Yes. Or, or uh, the tobacco stuff in Grand Yeah, Rapids. no, that's yeah. right. That's right. And I, gosh, I, that brain, that uh, shop's name is just. That's all right. Me. I always butchered it like the first time, yeah. first two times that I had I think on the it's show. Indian River Tobacco. Traders, that's it. I think. That's yeah. exactly I it. Think. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, just, man, so many good folks from that club. So, um, yeah, it was, it was great. You know, it really, really fun. You know, just some thoughts from the pipe show, uh, not really relating to uh, what happened up there, but, but just the tenor of the show that I thought I'd bring back and kind of mm. communicate. You know, th- this is an interesting time. I kind of went up there um, thinking that, okay, we're going up there. There's a lot, you know, of uh, kind of turmoil uh, in the industry right now. Uh, you know, of course, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, McClellan went out of business and, you know, the Dunhill tobaccos are are leaving the market supposedly. And, um, you know, there's all these regulations that no one knows anything about. So you kind of go up there with this Paul, you know, this this kind of feeling this veil uh, of like uncertainty and um, man, I was I was really encouraged. I, I and, it, and it was good for me. It was good for so many pipe smokers and and people in the community. Um, there's a general feeling of basically cautious optimism, you know, and and it's and it's really cool. There's and and I kind of want to unpack that just yeah. a, just a little bit. It won't take too long, but um, you know, obviously we've got a lot of regulatory concerns, right? And so. Uh, that's one of those things that, you know, it's the elephant in the room and and everyone's aware of it. But but what's what's been developing and what I got to see even firsthand and just, you know, kind of recognizing who the current players are, what their direction they're going in and, you know, everyone's swapping ideas and things like that. Um, th- there's there's kind of a um, we've got these regulatory concerns, but there's kind of a developing uh, window of understanding between uh, the feds and then also, um, you know, it, the, the people in, in our, you know, community. And so a lot of, you know, frankly, the, the federal government didn't know what it was getting into when, when they kicked this ant bed. Right. right, right exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, it's like, Oh wait, this is a big deal. Like, you know, they, they, they thought it was going to be similar to regulating, uh, you know, the cigarette industry or whatever. Sure. And I mean, if I'm, you know, you know if I'm remembering correctly, all of this really started because of e-cigarettes. No, that's right. Like not even, not even in the same. It, it's, it's a completely different, yeah. you know, arena. And, and so a wheelhouse, you know, and so, um, yeah. And, and, and so, you know, as the feds have kind of, you know, dived into this, uh, you know, and, and connected with people in the industry. Yeah. There's, you know, we've still got some hurdles to jump through here, but, but the people that are still in the industry, the people blending the tobacco, making the pipes, importing, uh, importing both of those things, um, you know, they, they're, they've been really good about educating some of these regulators. And so things are uh, developing some avenues are opening up and, and, and ways for, for, us as blenders to kind of move through the process, which is, which is good. So, you know, it, 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 this is all, it's all so fluid, but you know, you go into it thinking, oh my gosh, well, none of us will be able to blend anymore. And then you come away realizing, no, okay, well, well, there's some avenues here like that, you know, it's not going to be the way it was, but, but, you know, for the, for the folks like, uh, you know, like, like us and like so many others that are uh, young and energetic, there, there are avenues there to, to, you know, to work in. So it's, it's going to be different, but it, but it can be good. Were were there any heavy hitters present at the show? Uh, well, um, you know, of course our good friend, uh, Jeremy Reeves, uh, from Cornell and deal, uh, you know, you saw the president of, uh, you know, big companies like, uh, Mac Barron, um, you know, uh, folks and folks from, um, you know, like, uh, Gosh, Antoine, uh, the the head of Chacom uh, there in southern France, mm. um, you know, representatives from Sabinelli. Uh-huh. Uh, did you speak with him? I, I I did. I did. He sounded a lot more sophisticated than you. What are you talking but, about? <laughs> this is a perfect French accent. We, we need to have him on the show sometime. Oh, no, no, a, no, 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 no. He's no. such a great guy, man. He's he's really good. He's uh, really aggressive in what he's trying to do with, uh, of course, the Chacom factory and all the associated brands there uh, that come out of that factory. Um, and so, uh, yeah, fo- you know, uh, folks from the Savinelli shop, uh, you know, the Savinelli factory in Italy, uh, of course, all the, you know, great people at, uh, you know, places like Cornell and Deal, uh, you know, GLPs and, um, you know, the brands that kind of go along with them. And so it was just really, uh, really good. Uh, you know, a- a- another thing, you know, you've got folks that are kind of, um, you know, we, we had this idea that, oh, everyone's leaving the market, but, um, but that's not the case. There were more pipe carvers there this year than there ever been. You know, there's the, it was the biggest show this year that there's ever been, you know, there's people from all over the world more than there's ever been. And so, right, so right, there right. is this energy that's really good. There, there's more pipe smokers now in the United States than there have been in 20 years. And so you got to think about, okay, these are good things. Like, you know, we're starting to realize like, 
okay, we, you know, we've got some stuff to work through, but, but, you know, there's some, there's, there's momentum. Some, there's some positives there that need to be at least acknowledged. And so, sure. um, you know, tons of, tons of, tons of energy, um, you know, it, and there is kind of this new norm developing, like, yeah, it's not going to be, you know, the 1970s where it's kind of the wild west. And, but I mean, you know, it, it, it'll never look like that again. And it so, hasn't been. And, 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 you know, so we just kind of have to acknowledge that and, you know, and, and, you know, look back fondly when you could, you know, go inside the grocery store smoking your favorite English blend, but you know, that's not going to happen again. You know? Yeah. And even then that's, um, I mean, that's bad for like the, the larger tobacco blenders and companies that are out there. But I mean, like if that was the case, there would be no specialness of the country square. You no, know what I mean? Well, like, that's right. That's right. You know, of course we, um, you we're trying to, we're trying to find these silver linings yeah, and really, absolutely. really, um, you know, continue to, to focus on that. And there's so much to be, you know, really thankful for in that, in that, uh, sense. So, uh, just lots of enthusiasm with the new, uh, new carvers, new accessory makers. And, and one thing too, you know, I, the, the first part of this year, you know, and I, I want to just be honest with you and with our listeners, like, I, I felt like I was kind of guilty of buying into this, like, you know, everything's, um, it, you know, everything's going down the tubes and, uh, you know, there's no hope and all this stuff, but, um, man, after connecting with some folks, you know, up there, there's a lot of good, of good, not just in the community, but also quality product that's being put out right now. I mean, you've got, you've got companies like, um, you know, Savinelli, uh, you know, Costello, Chacombe, I mean, you know, all, you know, big names, small names, medium names. I mean, these are companies, they're all cranking out some of the nicest pieces they've ever done. Hmm. Their marketing is more aggressive than it's ever been. These are people that have resources and they are over, they're not pulling back. They're, they're committing, they're, they're, they're doubling down, you know, on this market because they believe in it. And people, you know, when you, when you realize that you think, okay, well, people, uh, businesses don't do that because they think it's, you know, it makes them happy or fun. I mean, some, some businesses do. Yeah. Hopefully it's a little bit. So, of fun so, hopefully it's some yeah. of that, but businesses make, you know, decisions based on, um, based on facts and based on, you know, the realities of the market. And so when you see these big companies, uh, that are, you know, starting to do this kind of stuff, you're like, okay, well that, that shows you that something's there, you There's know what I mean? some confidence in the industry. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. if, if I'm building a hundred million dollar hotel, you better believe I'm going to explore every single thing about the property <laughs> I'm putting it on. Right. Right. I'm going right. to, I'm going to look at the demographics, the buying patterns, the uh, you know, the traffic flow, everything. And, and these, these pipe companies are the same way. The tobacco makers, they're the exact same way. And so, and, and so for them to be investing in this stuff is really, you know, just really positive. And, um, and, and, and I, in talking to some folks, you know, also, you know, it, um, it, it's becoming a little more apparent too, that there's quality leaf out there it's just being, you know, it's just, it's just different than it used to be. You know, there's a lot of folks that, oh, well, McClellan's gone and, and they are, and we, we lament that and, and, and should, uh, you know, but, um, you know, McClellan was one of many blenders that, uh, you know, blend stunning tobaccos. And of course we, we love what they do, but, um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the trademark flavor and taste of McClellan, a lot of that was their processing. A lot of, you know, the ways they, uh, aged and, uh, you know, cure, you know, or just took the tobacco and, uh, you know, put it, made it, you know, to be fresh in the tin and all these things. That was just kind of their method. Um, you know, who's to say that someone can't come, come along and replicate some of that or, know? or improve upon or improve upon it. Yeah. And so, um, you know, the, the quality, there is quality leaf out there. And that was really encouraging for me to hear people that actually, uh, you know, I got to talk to folks that actually, uh, you know, deal with, uh, you know, deal with raw leaf, you know, coming off the farm, you know, going to, going to pick it up in the, um, you know, when it, when it's bailed up and seeing what it actually looks like. And there's some, there's some good leaf out there yet. And, and not just leaf from other countries, but from the United States. And that's, oh, wow. that's yeah. really, that's really encouraging. So, um, you know, you've got, uh, new sources of leaf though, too, uh, you know, in developing markets, places, uh, you know, other countries that, um, you know, are, are starting to create, you know, better leaf as well. So that kind of brings the, the whole, the whole ocean up. Um, but the American market is still, still strong with that. So, um, and then of course this kind of new younger generation of blenders, you know, folks like Jeremy, uh, who do such a good job and, and, you know, they're the, the pressure cooker that is created by, you know, struggle, only creates more creativity. And so we're trying to, you know, we're trying to see that, you know, that's the thing you've got to understand that, you know, the creativity is only going to explode because of, you know, the, 
the necessity. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. I, I don't know if I've made this comparison on the show before, but but I might have. But I mean, like limitation, you're exactly right. Limitation breeds creativity. If you look at what George Lucas did in the original Star Wars movies and the amazingness of those yeah. effects, those practical yeah. effects, versus what he did with the prequels. And like with the prequels, he had like CGI, a budget like you wouldn't believe in everything else. Right. But like you you look at these two and like, no, 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 no. The practical effects and just like the 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 beauty of, oh, we wanted to do this, but we couldn't do this. So we had to stick a pole in there and do this. And <laughs> it added all this unique texture this and literal everything fishing else. line, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so like, no, yeah, I think, I think uh, from that standpoint, it, it can be frustrating because obviously yeah. you want, you have a grand vision of what you want to create, be it a, uh, you know, a space movie or a blended tobacco. But the reality is, is when, when you kind of got what you got, then you got to get creative in order to no, make it true. something special. That's and it, oftentimes it becomes more special for that reason. And, and and so I think you're, you know, as we get through this, you know, transition period of, okay, where the kind of the break from the old school to the new school, you, you've got, you've got more pipe smokers than you have in several years, which, you know, it's not the 1970s again, but, but we've got a lot of pipe smokers now uh, in this exciting new industry. And so, you know, the, the, the people that are still in the market, they're aggressive, uh, they're, you know, they're investing their hard earned resources in it, you know, making and, and those decisions are rational decisions. Um, you know, the there's a young group of people kind of coming through that realize like, OK, well, things are different. So how do we utilize the resources we have? There's there's a market out there because there's all these pipe smokers. So, you know, obviously we have something to to have to give them something. Um, and, and you've got strong brands. You've got, for goodness sakes, that, you know, everyone's like, well, Dunhill's pulling out of the market. Well, a lot of folks don't realize this, but Dunhill Tobacco has not been made by the Dunhill company for, um, gosh, since the late 80s, I believe. Hmm. So that's that's when that actually was spun off into its own thing. So, so the brand Dunhill Tobacco, that's actually not associated and hasn't been for years with with the pipe making company. Interesting. Yeah. Well, the pipe making company has just re-entered the American market and they've doubled down once again. You know, their their distributor is really aggressive. Um, you know, they've got, you know, they're flooding the market with lots of just premium pieces. I mean, the, these guys they don't, see the opportunity. They, they see the they opportunity the vacuum, there. I mean, yeah. you know, so you're about to see more Dunhills out there. I mean, and, uh, and you know, and <laughs> frankly, we hope to be a part of that. But, you know, it's, it's exciting because, you know, these are, these are, you know, big companies and, and, you know, esteemed names that are not backing down. They're, they're making rational decisions that are, um, you know, that are, you know, positive for the industry's future, which is, which is really cool. So a lot of positivity. And then, and, and then one, th one other thing I wanted to mention, like, you know, there's a lot of good guys in this market and they're still, they, they still really exist. You know, we talk about, um, you know, folks that are helping each other out, folks like the carvers that are, you know, uh, over a over a pipe, you know, they're kind of uh, sharing a pint of beer, they're in the smoking tent hanging out, and they're kind of swapping tips from each other. Uh, a lot of that comes with humility, you know, it's, uh, it's, you know, the folks that are willing to pitch in and help each other out uh, to make this, this community even better. Blenders that are like, hey, have you tried this, or have you done that? And, you know, I just, gosh, I've got so much to learn, and, and, and I'm constantly humbled when I am around some of these folks. It's, it's really exciting, but um, one story I have to tell, which is which is cool, and I I didn't witness this personally, but I've heard um, from a few sources that that uh, Ewan Reese, uh, of course, the big uh, you know esteemed tobacconist there in Chicago, I actually got to see them. Uh, John Michael and I actually oh, really? went to went to go visit them. I'd never been downtown, and it's pretty cool, right? Uh, it was awesome, man. Did yeah, you go back was, into their club area? It was great. You know, no, it was right there towards the end of okay. it, and and they didn't uh they they didn't let us back there. You know, did, did they know who you were? I it doesn't matter. You know, I don't, I don't just go around. Uh, no, man, you got to <laughs> lean into that. Look, when, when, when they fly like, Oh, Oh, country squire radio. Oh yeah. No, let, let's, let's show you the premium. Oh, no, come on back. Come dude, on I, back. Dude, I use that like visa. I, well, you <laughs> Whenever know, I travel. It, it, it's one of those things, you know, I, I, I was very intent on kind of being in, incognito on this trip. And oh, that, was, man. that was nice. So, uh, but yeah, man, they, they were really kind, you know, I went in there, didn't, you know, didn't say I was another retailer, didn't say anything about, you know, our involvement in the industry and they couldn't have been more first class. They, mm -hmm. they really could not have been, you go in there and of course everyone's, uh, you know, wearing a suit and, Family business. uh, man, it's just, uh, you know, the, everyone's dressed to the nines and the shop has done up really well. There's chandeliers and, and of course just, uh, just thousands of pipes, you know, and it was just really, really impressive. But, uh, but one thing even Reese did. And, you know, we talk about McClellan going out of business and and now, you know, people are selling cans of Christmas cheer for, you know, uh, 80, 100, 120 dollars, this kind of thing. Apparently, Why did that stock up? 
apparently, apparently, Ewan Reese saved a bunch of a bunch of McClellan product, and at the show, they released it at at MSRP. Really? Now that is class. All right. That is class. They say they saved that stuff up and released it at the show for pipe enthusiasts, and they didn't gouge. They charged MSRP, and then they went home. Wow, that is class. Okay, like so, hat, like hat, hat tip to Ewan Reese. You you, you got to give him that. So so when so when when I went to visit them, this was like what two years ago. Yeah, um, took me back, took me back, showed me their 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 their, their warehouse, you know, the, the their stock and everything. Uh, got to see the club I, I remember seeing everything. all the photos of that. And well, everything. there were yeah. photos that they told me not to share. Yeah. yeah. Because they had a, I, I don't want to call it a stockpile per se, but let's just say they were ready for almost anything with any, like any, any brand. brand. Yeah. Kind of contingency. And I was yeah. like, I was like, okay, y'all are planning ahead. <laughs> like, like <laughs> y'all are ready. So that does not surprise me at all. You know, it just, it, it, it but, was, but what does surprise me is they didn't like, I, if, if I was them, it just makes good business sense. You up the price. Well, no, that's it. And and so, you know, you can't, uh, the, the cheapest I saw a tin of Christmas cheer uh, at the Chicago pipe show was $35. Oh, wow. And, and, and that, but that was not at the Ewan Reese table. Mm. Uh, that, that was one of the people just that collected it. A lot of folks were selling it for 50. You had some folks selling it for, uh, for, uh, 60, 75, but, uh, you know, it, they were, they were inflated prices because Man. of the scarcity of it. Right. Yeah, look, well, Ewan Reese, they, they were like, you know what, we're going out with the bang. We're going to, we're going to reward these people. We're going to celebrate this thing. And they, um, man, they, they just, they opened it up. And That's I, outstanding. I, I, was, I was really proud of them for doing that. Yeah. yeah I'm really proud of them. I've been sitting on that knowledge for a little while. Cause they, they asked me not to talk about it, <laughs> but, <laughs> but here we are. And so it's like one of those things, like it, I, I had no idea that they were planning on doing something like that, 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 that's just, that is, that's premium people. That's premium people moving some premium back. Over it right is. That, that's it amazing. is, man. It was really, you just, just know that, man, the, that there's, there's folks that are excited. They're, they're investing in our industry and there's a, there's a lot of good guys left. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Really, really encouraging, man. I, I came back more than anything. Just, uh, I went up there with some anxiety, came back with just a lot of encouragement. So it was great. It was great. Please go to the Chicago Pipe Show. I hope, uh, man, hope if it's uh, something you haven't done and you are a pipe enthusiast, you ought to do it once. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah. Well, you know, there's always somebody I look forward to seeing. Uh, one, yes. one booth in particular. Yes. It's always got some great products that are out there and, and has some uh, always some smiles and some warm greetings behind them. Because I'm talking about the booth of the company of Missouri Meerschaum. That's right. That's right, man. Got to spend some great time with Phil Morgan and uh, saw saw Pat. And, Did you talk to him about uh, the thing? The team and uh, I, I talked to him about the thing. Okay. I, I talked about. Is he open to the thing? He wants to do the thing, but not not when we wanted to do. The okay, thing. so we'll have to figure out the. But we're going to talk about the thing. All right, we'll talk about the and, thing later. And, and real soon we'll be we'll be talking to you guys about uh, about the thing about the thing. Yeah, with, with Missouri Meerschaum, and that's going to be exciting. Yeah, so, man. Yeah. Of course, uh, Missouri <laughs> Meerschaum, uh, maker of fine premium corn cob pipes. That's right. We got that's a pipe right. bus sponsor in this show. I see. We do, man. The Fifth Avenue Diplomat Cob Pipe. This is a. A large, uh, straight corn cob pipe. It's got uh, just a real generous size bowl. It's like a half cob, you know. It's one of those yeah. that uh, maybe a third of a cob. I don't know. It's like you cut the cob the in side. half and you give it to your kids. Yeah, they eat the, the they corn. They gnaw on it and you, you know, dry and it out and you make a corn cob. Right, and, you, and that's it. That's <laughs> it. Uh, man, a beautiful pipe. It's got a generous chamber and a, a really high quality uh, long stem there. And uh, it's one of those that uh, you know comes in comes in two different ty types. You've got an apple, uh, but the the Fifth Avenue cob is is kind of a large. Uh, straight billiard and uh, and really popular. It's good for someone that likes a more generous sized pipe. But um, you know, it's so cool. You know, uh, going up there, seeing Phil, uh, getting to kind of you know hear the stories about people coming by uh, their table and saying, "Hey, you know, I just want you to know we we uh, you know got on board with you. We smoke your pipes because of you know those those two idiots in Mississippi that, that talk about you every Are week." You serious? And uh, and man, that made me feel like a million bucks. You know, it, come on, it now. really it really did. And so, uh, man, it was. It was it was special, but um, y'all listeners, by the way, are awesome. Yeah, that right there, y'all are awesome. It was it was really it was really That's kind. What I'm talking about and, uh, man, him, uh, of course, Dan Nimitz, our, our good friend that is now with Missouri Meerschaum. Um, those folks, they were just they were slinging some some cobs, man. They were, and uh, and you know they've got a lot up their sleeve. I mean, these are folks that are constantly looking for the next thing. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I'm just really proud of uh, of what they're doing. Of course, we're proud to be associated with them, and uh, and we also think you ought to pick up a Fifth Avenue Diplomat. Corn cow pipe. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And hey, if you've got a uh, Fifth Avenue, be sure to smoke it this week. Take a picture of yourself doing it. Tweet it to us. We'll retweet it out. It's a great way to let the good folks at Missouri Meerschaum know you appreciate them for sponsoring this show. 
All right, man. Pipe question of the week comes in from our boy Mike. <laughs> Let me try that again. <laughs> All, right. <clears throat> All right, man. Pipe question of the week this week comes in from our boy Mark VV. All right, here's what Mark has to say. John David and Bo, or Bo and John David, I don't think this is one that has ever been asked before, or at least not as long as I've listened to the show, unless I missed it. Entirely possible, of course. It says, my friend Randy clued me into something that I was not aware of. Baking tobacco. Exactly as it sounds, quite literally throwing an unopened tin of tobacco, be it coin style or American style, uh, sans, of course, the plastic lid, into the oven and baking it, usually at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, or two for uh, for two hours, and then letting it rest for a few weeks. From what I've read, this simultaneously uh, ages. Wait, simultaneously? No, this simulates the aging uh, by quote stoving. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts? Does this actually work? And what are might some of the benefits be uh, to this uh, good old fashioned timed aging? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me just go ahead and say this very clearly. I am not recommending that anyone put a closed metal vacuum sealed tin of anything in their oven and cook it no okay? that's what the microwave is for Wait, no, <laughs> no, no, no 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 don't do it don't do it uh, so so if you if you do this just know that i am not recommending that you do this <laughs> this is not a recommendation of country square radio or any of its affiliated uh parties or members or sponsors um having said that huh <laughs> Having said that, uh, some folks do this. They will actually take an unopened tin of tobacco and put it in their oven. Interesting. Um, you know, you obviously there's reasons that you've got to be careful about this. Uh, you know, they it, it does in some it, I, I've never done this. OK, so again, <laughs> uh, and I really I really never have. I've, I've never done this. But in some cases, there are reports that this. Uh, it creates a stoving process that really does, uh, you know, bring out some interesting flavors. Uh, we've talked about the stove tobaccos before, particularly Virginia's with a high sugar content might uh, react to this well uh, in theory. <laughs> um, you know, uh, th there are reports of people that have put it in their oven and, you know, maybe at a at too high of a temperature and it has uh, it's ex exploded. Um, and, and so, you know, you need to you need to realize that if you're going to, you know, going to try this again, which we're not recommending. Yeah. Um, but having said that, you know, some people have found that at around that 200 degree uh, Fahrenheit, uh, you know, that maybe something can happen there. Um, so, you know, if, if it might be something if you're dangerous and, you know, uh, and want to live on the crazy side and maybe the cousin of evil Knievel, then, you know, uh -huh. you, you, you do this one weekend, but you blow but, up your own house, but, but just know that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not recommending. And, you know, actually, you're so back in the day, I'll probably I, go home and do it tonight. Yeah, but, uh, right. <laughs> uh -huh. Back in the day, I used to work in telecom. And so like dealing with like cell phones, such people come in, you know, they drop their, their phone in the water. Yeah. And of course, at this point, we're all aware of the rice trick. But like some people mm -hmm, would say like, mm -hmm. oh, well, I went to this one store and they told me to put it in my oven. And I was like, first of all, who told you to put your cell phone in your oven? That was AT&T. And right. second of all, yeah, right. right. <laughs> and then, second of all, you did it? I kind of feel like if you do it, you kind of get what's coming to you. I know, right? Yeah. What's the, they call it the Darwin Awards or whatever. It's yeah, like, right. yeah, just kind of weeding out the, uh, no. No, you know, there, there are. There are reports. You can go in there and read. People have talked about different tobaccos and how they react to that. Um, you know, if that's something you choose to pursue, that's great. Uh, but we are not recommending it for a variety of reasons. No. <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. And and, to, and watch Mark do it and then come back with this like amazing tobacco. And then I go do it and burn my house down. Yeah, right. just, just be careful. <laughs> I, I need Mark. He's part of our crew with the Squire Scout. I know, so right? Can't, I can't, know. Can't, can't blow up Mark. Well, great question, Mark. And hey, if you've got a pipe question of the week, you can send it into us. Show at CountrySquireRadio.com. Again, that's show at CountrySquireRadio.com. Quick fire questions. Ow! All right, man. We got quick fire questions in, of course, brought to us by the Tin Society, an amazing online service that we are going to tell you about in just a moment. But first, uh, these continue on the uh, very uh, creative quick fire questions that we've gotten from our anonymous source. Yeah. Not to be confused with the uh, hacktivist group. All right. <laughs> at the movies. Are you ready, sir? Okay. At the, at the movies is, That's the, is the, theme. the theme of this. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, read the book and then see the movie or see the movie, then read the book. I'm a, I'm a book movie guy mm. in that, in that order. And, and really, honestly, the only reason I go see books that are based on movies that are based on books is because I enjoyed the book first. Yeah. 
Now that's probably you know in some cases I I've probably gone and seen a movie and then realized afterwards that there was a book. Sure. Yeah, you know, yeah, sometimes yeah. that kind of thing happens, mm-hmm. but but in on average, you know, yeah, I want to read the book. Yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah. Um I, I like uh you know, I like knowing what the original creator's intent was for the story before actually experiencing the the movie version. Yeah. It doesn't I, always happen, but no, I, agree, I agree. It's the preferred method. Uh historical fiction, emphasis on accuracy or emphasis on style? Accuracy. Mm. But I get it. <laughs> I, I, I get you know accuracy yeah. but i mean i you know we, we're i i get the i get the temptation to embellish I, yeah. I, I, I get it so like i i'm bothered by inaccuracy but i think that the emphasis on style is important because you're you're, you're making a movie like you have to have a, a narrative story and that's going to require embellishment along the way but it's frustrating because most people only know the history from the movie you know what i mean like everybody thinks they understand the creation of facebook because they saw the social network you know yeah <laughs> like no, that's, that's right that's their that's understanding right. of what that is regardless of whether or not it's accurate yeah uh but makes for really compelling film so <laughs> i i'm torn on that one but I'm, I'm gonna say at the end make a good product make make a good yeah uh, artistic piece let's yeah. go no it's good it's good sci-fi scary aliens or peaceful aliens scary aliens you, you want to mix it up you know i mean che- chewbacca He's a he's a he's a well, peaceful. No, I mean, he's alien. peaceful, but I mean, you know, if you're going to have a movie about aliens, it's just it's, Star Wars is different. You know, it's its own kind of special kind of saga thing. You know, if you if you just gonna make a movie about aliens, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I want them scary. Um, yeah, I I I don't know. I'm not a big horror genre guy, and yeah, I feel like scary aliens that. is kind of like the, the yeah, horror thing. Okay. Um, but yeah. But by the way, did you have a happy May the Fourth? Uh, uh, I, Star Wars Day? I, I did. And, okay. and, and did you? Uh, yes, yes. And may the fourth be with you. And, and also with you. All right. So uh, for horror, supernatural, evil, or real world evil? Like, are we a uh, serial killer or like demons? Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, supernatural. Yeah. Real world evil in a horror film <laughs> is a little too... It's a little too much. Can't handle me. it. Yeah, but yeah. supernatural, I can ke- still kind of maintain some disconnectedness there. I think that is just me personally. What's the last? What's the last horror film you saw? Like in theaters, in theaters. Gosh, I don't know. It's been you. I, I I tend to not choose that willingly. Neither do I. I right. think honestly, it was the Ring, like the the original. Yeah, ring. yeah. no, I, it might. Well, yeah, I may have gone back that far too. Actually, yeah. it's been. Yeah, I, I I really don't have many. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm with you. Forward. Supernatural. Yeah. Uh, you can always you know remind your brain it ain't real. Okay. Uh, we're, we're such a bunch of pansies. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, I say as I sit here and drink my Miller High Life. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, comedy slams slapstick or deadpan. Slapstick, I guess. A deadpan all the way. I don't know. Deadpan's like Arrested Development, man. Okay, deadpan. Yeah, yeah. No, that's right. Slapstick Dead, is like uh, the Three, Three Stooges, Stooges or yeah. something. Yeah, no, dead deadpan. Yeah. yeah. All right, and uh, happy ending or sad ending? Happy endings. Always. Ooh, okay. Always. Always. So, so yes. I mean, at the end of the day, we're not we're not Europeans. We're Americans. We like a happy ending. Like if we were Europeans, we'd want everybody to be sad and depressed all the time. And and then it says fiend. Yeah. After, yeah. The, after it in black and white. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Everyone's dead. Nobody fell in love except with the wrong people. And then it's just awful. Like right. That's, and, and that's what they call a good movie. <laughs> in London. No offense to our chaps in foggy London town, uh, but you oh, like the sad funny. content. Our that's office funny. ended happy. Y'all's office ended depressing. That's really funny. Wow. wow. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so, so yeah, definitely happy endings. But the uh, the most recent Avengers, I don't want to spoil it. So that's all I'll say. Uh, all right, man. Great, great uh, quick fire yeah, questions. From Anonymous. Those are good, good questions, good. man. Anonymous hooked this up. Actually, Anonymous sent an entire another round because we, we enjoyed his questions so much. Uh, although I'll probably, we've got a, a, a nice uh, a nice uh, a grouping that came from Yeah, we'll, the, we'll sprinkle it in yeah. down the road. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll definitely swing back to you, Anonymous. That's but, good. Uh, these, these were excellent. And of course, quick fire questions brought to us by the 10 societycom or 10 societycom That's right. Now, 10 societycom is the place you go if you want hand delivered. And I mean hand by the UPS guy but <laughs> <laughs> and delivered tobaccos but to prom- your door. promptly hand delivered. Oh, absolutely. That's right. That's right. So many different tobaccos out there. Of course, you hear us waxing on and on about what great tobaccos there are that are still being made to this day. New blends that are coming out mm-hmm. regularly uh, from some of these venerated companies. And and the way to sample them uh, is through 10society.com. Uh, of course, what they do is they send you uh, just a really neat 
box every month. You get a, a professionally curated box uh, full of premium tobaccos. Uh, you get to try uh, some of the best in the world and, and some also that, you know, are great that maybe you've never heard of. It might be a new favorite. Uh, you might be one of those people that's like, I love this really obscure tobacco and then <laughs> fall, in, fall in love with it. And that's all you ever smoke again. But but you may not be exposed to it until you sign up with 10 society and you can do that at 10 society.com absolutely and when you use the code squire you get 20 percent off on your first month service and for those of you just signing up for the first time when you get that first box in take a picture of that because i've i've seen some folks doing like the uh, kind of the unboxing type yeah, setup yeah and uh you know they'll have their their missouri meerschaum pipe and they'll they'll have their new tobaccos and uh be sure to yeah co copy us on those we, we need to start we, we want to see that we, we want to get those out yeah yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. sure do. So. Especially those of you who do the videos. I like I you know, I get into the whole unboxing uh videos and everything. You are a video guy. I, I well, you know, I, I'm an audio guy first, of course, but but I do I do enjoy the uh, the idea of like you don't necessarily know what like what's in the box. No, it's true. You know? Yeah. yeah. yeah so you open it and you and, and me as the viewer gets to find out when you do. One. You open the box, and that's what you gotta do with the Tin Society. And be sure to use the code Squire <laughs> <laughs> when you sign up, and you'll save twenty percent off your first month service. All right, man, we got some uh, <laughs> great listener feedback in this week. Uh, let's see, we got this uh, great iTunes review in from uh, Bl Bl Blackek, Blakek, Blakek. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> what did what did uh, what did B have to say? <laughs> he said, uh, "Great podcast, uh, providing a wealth of info on pipe smoking. JD and Bo have a great dynamic that makes this podcast a joy to listen to. Uh, there's great knowledge shared that benefits everyone, from the novice pipe smoker to the veteran. Uh, give it a listen and consider supporting the Pipecast on Patreon." Uh, which of course we're not going to disagree with that. No, nope. but uh, man, Bl Blake, <laughs> thank you so much, brother. We're glad this is a man been a good resource for you, and we're uh, we're so glad you enjoy it. Yep. We also got a uh, shout out from uh, Tim Hauser, who's going back listening to the uh, the episode where we referenced the bagpipes uh, with uh, Brian yeah. Austin Green. Yeah, the sketch from, uh, ro from Robot Chicken. From Robot Chicken, <laughs> and of course the idea is in so that random. sketch <laughs> that uh, that he left Megan Fox. This is an alternate reality where he left right. Megan Fox, never right. married her, so that he could pursue his real dream of of becoming a, a pipe shop owner basically being john david cole right uh, and, and so tim tim writes in he goes i would totally leave megan fox for the love of, of a pipe i'm just saying so wow you know, that's there yeah you go. no that's there there, everyone's got priority yeah. and then we also got uh, one in from uh, nelson what did nelson our have to say? good friend nelson yeah he says uh hey guys just wanted to say great show this week uh they're all pretty great though he says i wanted to give a shout out to andrew lynn from boston uh, who sent you the tobacco? So that that was the tobacco that That's we right, yeah. uh, we were gifted. You you were gifted and had a had a great oh, opportunity to do that. Dude, my office um, still smells. The oh, next so time good. he's in Paredes, he should say hello to Nate Davis, um, who works there and is a member of the Sherlock Holmes Pipe Club. Of course, Nelson is uh, heavily involved in the Sherlock Holmes Club. Uh, speaking of which, hey Andrew, why aren't you a member of the Sherlock <laughs> Holmes Pipe Club? And so uh, he says uh, next meeting will be on June fifth. So if any of you are in the Boston area, just you know we're glad to announce that on the show. Uh, June fifth will be uh, the next meeting of that that club. He says, come on down. Also enjoyed hearing about Benjamin Hornigold, uh, the pirate, of course, we, yeah. we, we talked about uh, that you'd researched so thoroughly. Um, years ago, I was really into the Renaissance fairs and had a couple of pirate costumes. Uh, one year we went uh, to the pirate fair in Gloucester, Massachusetts, huh, huh. Uh, ran into these guys. Finally, John David, the movie you were referring to, I believe, was Catch Me If You Can with Leonardo DiCaprio. And he is exactly right. That yeah. was the movie I was I was thinking about. And he right. says, uh, if you have not seen it, you definitely should uh, keep up the good work, Nelson. And uh, and Nelson, actually, I am, uh, I am smoking tonight, uh, oddly enough, uh, L.J. Peretti, uh, number eight slices. And they were given to me um, by our good friend Randall. And, oh, right uh, and they are delicious. It's the first time I've ever had them, and they are uh, they are noteworthy. So I would I would highly recommend you try them. Yes, that's awesome. Very good. Thanks for the thanks for the um, the feedback. Right? Absolutely, Nelson. Actually, I'm I'm already working on uh, uh, research. I actually just bought a book on uh, Captain Kidd, and on the uh, the yeah the uh, the the cover of the 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 book. It's uh, I think that the book is called I think The Trial of Cap Captain Kidd, and he's standing there. It's an artist rendering of him smoking a clay pipe on the cover. So he he very well may may. may 
be the next Pirates and Pipe Tobacco uh, a featurette yeah, pirate good. down the road. Yeah, it's so good. That's good. We'll see. But yeah, great listener feedback, everybody. And hey, if you've got uh, something you want to share with us, you can always email us, show at countrysquireradio.com. We also love getting in the tweets, the Facebook messages, all the social media. You can actually follow us on Twitter at Squire Radio. You can follow us individually as well. I'm at the real Bo York. I'm at John David Cole, or you can get us at the shop at, at underscore Country Squire. And of course, all that information and more can be found at Country Squire Radio dot com which the website is up and working now thank goodness uh so you can find yeah. us there yeah 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 you can also uh tune in to join us for the live shows uh live on monday nights the at 8 30 p.m central that's 6 30 pacific 9 30 eastern uh now on that note we will be back next week at that exact same time but the week following that one uh we will actually be off that week because i'm taking taking the kiddos to the beach that's right yeah yep. yeah, yeah, yeah so yep. it'll, it'll be a lot of fun Ow! All right, man. So yeah, I think uh, I think I think that's all the the pertinent information. Yeah, man. Dude, Chicago. It was great, dude. It was great, and I'm really broke, but hopefully have some shiny new things to sell. I know, I know. <laughs> you come back with all this stuff. I just imagine you coming back, and and your Had wife to wash dishes and stuff. You know, <laughs> well, like like your wife looks at you, and you got like these bags, like these duffel bags packed with pipes. Right, right. And she just kind of gives you that look, like, you, what did you, what did you just spend our money on? Right. And you're like, no, it's for the shop. Right. You know, like that's that's always going to be the excuse. But, all of us, you're going to have a drone flying in here, drone, right? And, uh, like, no, water know, slide. Yeah, 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 yeah. All, all kinds of like, stuff. It's for the shop. It's, for, it's the way we pay our bills. It's baby. Totally it's totally it. <laughs> our our live studio audience, aka my wife, is uh is is not for it. Yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> well, hey man, let's go have a night. See you, Bo. All right, guys. Thank y'all so much for joining. Yeah, we had fun, y'all. It's always good to good to see you again. I, I was hoping to come back from Chicago with some uh live content and uh lost my voice Sunday morning, uh, which was when I had kind of set aside for all the all the interviews and stuff. And so uh, didn't work out, but we're going to try to catch up with a few of the folks who went on to later. So, um, anyway, it was a great time. It's so good to see some of y'all, and uh, just glad to glad to reconnect with you tonight. It's a rookie mistake, man. That's why it you was, knock out the interviews up front, well, so then that, you can party hard for the rest of the time. That would have made a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> you did good. I'm just glad you glad you're here and able to talk today. I get we're you know it it, it it's I, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. I, I,